Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB TV and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today, we are chatting with Rusty Inman, Executive Director of the John Jay Center for Learning. Rusty has generously agreed to share some of the experience with us. Thank you, Rusty, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So this is a really interesting program. Talk about the program, its inception, and the people that you serve. The idea of John Jay Center for Learning came 1999. There was a futurist that came to Portland uh, that a local philanthropist brought. And what this guy said was in order for Portland and Jay County to be successful in the 21st century, there's got to be some touch with post-secondary education, whether it's community college, four-year university, whatever that it was at the time, um, that's what had to that's what had to happen to be successful. And Portland is a small community. It is. Town of, you know, roughly 6,000 in a county of 21,000. Uh, more than 50% of the people who work in Jay County work in manufacturing. So, I mean, we we have manufacturing roots. We have mechanical roots. That's, that's who we are. And ma the manufacturing sector has shrunk. Mechanical engineering is now no longer the, the powerhouse of, of American uh, economic development yeah. anymore. Well, but in, in Jay County, we, we've held pretty steady because we, we have a diversity in our manufacturing sector. So we're not heavy in automotive or heavy in food. We're, we're very diversified, which has played in our favor during some economic downturns. It seems to hit us less, uh, but, but things are, things are still going very well there in manufacturing because because of our diversity i guess and we there's there tends there still is a need great need for for employees for skilled and unskilled and honestly that's that's what we're doing that's what we're trying to help so it's skilled unskilled and reskilled correct constantly reskilled uh, uh educated workers yeah. so your center basically provides that link Correct. into outside knowledge that needs to permeate right. the county so that people can continue to thrive. Correct. So, you know, with us, we partner with Ivy Tech Community College, with Indiana Wesleyan, Vincennes University, Purdue Polytechnic, Wright State University in Ohio, now Indiana Tech University. And with the Wright State, we have, it was a year ago this month in January, we um, we started a manufacturing academy and we're teaching industrial maintenance skills that has taken off like we never thought it would. Um, I mean, our goal for the first year was 30 people. Um, as of today, we have 108 people in this. Wow. We're drawing from eight counties, um, which really speaks to the need that is there for a skilled skilled worker. So talk about the, the form that these partnerships take. Are, are these uh, universities contributing uh, teachers and resources? They are. So uh, let's see, Indiana, Wesleyan, Vincennes, Purdue, um, Ivy Tech, they're all in-person for credit you know, classes that we're teaching. Um, Indiana Tech will be the same. We're not, we will start that program will be engineers that will start in the fall in you know late summer early fall but the the skills track that's the, the manufacturing training we're doing that is that's a hybrid it's some online and then they do hands-on skills you know we have a million dollars worth of equipment in a lab that you know we got some grant money from the state of Indiana from Department of Workforce Development that helped pay for that but the interesting part of that is that, you know, we house it, we've purchased the equipment, but the manufacturing sector really has taken ownership of that. So we've asked them to pick the pick the curriculum, which they picked skills track, pick the training equipment we're using, even down to they send people, they interview teaching candidates and they're telling us who to hire as instructors. So this is all demand driven, end user, they're the ones making all the decisions because at the end of the day, we're sending employees to them. They need to be skilled up for their needs. So this is really an all-in community effort. It really is, yeah. And the and the, the community is, 
has bought in, you know, with students, with, you know, we do an annual fundraising campaign and we ask the community for money and they respond and because it's important. I mean, education is something that, you know, it, I always say if I'm going to rename John Jay, it's going to be the Teach a Man to Fish Center mm -hmm. uh, because we're giving people skills to give them the opportunity to have a good middle class life. You know, we're not, we know who we are. So to be more than that, I mean, we want to, we want to skill people up so they can, like I said, have a nice middle class life and provide for their families and give their kids hope. And it's amazing how this ancient wisdom never becomes outdated, right? right. It's, yeah. it's, it's the, this whole idea. It used to be teach a man to fish. Now it's teaching people to run um, industrial machines sure. and, and maintain them and yes. program them and, and, uh, and understand workflow and understand the control systems. Absolutely. And those are going to constantly change. So you're going to not only teach a person to fish, yeah. but you're going to teach a person to continue to acquire other skills that, that the drive of innovation requires of them as the economy moves forward. Absolutely. And we're working with the, with the uh, we have a manufacturing council that we have four counties worth of people in this manufacturing council for, and they drive what we're doing. What we're doing now and what we're doing in 10 years is probably gonna look a lot different, but we're still going to be, I mean, our goal is to reach the needs of the community. So the core competency is not a particular skill set; It's the ability to um, convey uh, the skills that are going to be needed by workers over the next five years. And right. as, the, as that five years lapses, those next generation skills are going to be slightly different. You're not wedded to a particular skill set. You're wedded to the idea of what euphemistically is called lifelong learning. But right. it really is just the acquiring of, of new capabilities in order to prosper. Absolutely, yeah. In terms of, of how a student experiences the cost of attending, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about people who are not necessarily able to just blithely write an unlimited check. Right. How does that work? What are the costs to the students? Well, the tuition costs with the traditional universities that we deal with, um, you know, they're, it's all grant. You know, they they're, have access to Pell Grants and federal financial aid and state financial aid. And that typically covers the majority of the cost of the of the universities that we're dealing but with. But there's also skin in the game of, there is. Of, of, of the students. Yeah, there is. Because if, if something is, is free, sometimes it's not valued. Well, but on the other hand, if you make it out of reach, yeah. if you don't make it attainable, yeah. so you basically are looking at the students on a case-by-case -case basis. We are. And, you know, with our manufacturing training, it's funny. We have 108 students. More than 80 of those are being sponsored by work and the companies are sending and paying, but the students that that do the best or that take it more seriously are the ones that are writing their own check. Mm -hmm. And they are, as you said, they have the skin in the game, you know, guys that have worked all day and, you know, they have a good job and, and that's fine, but it's the guy that's working on a production floor making 12 or $15 an hour that says, I can make a couple thousand dollar investment and that can make me go from $15 an hour to $25 an hour. That guy's really serious about it and he wants to get through it as quickly as he can so he can move on and, and make that extra money. Talk a little bit about uh, what your budget is, yeah. um, how your staffing works, how your interactions with your faculty work, yeah. uh, volunteers and so on. So we, we do a lot of work with very few people. So staff, we're a full-time staff of three. Three. Yeah. And, you know, part-time staff, we have, I guess, probably uh, total, there's nine of us, so six part-time staffers. Uh, we utilize volunteers, you know, always. Absolutely. Um, you know, a budget of five to $600,000 a year. Um, we're lean. We have to be, you know. And I guess I'm, I'm not afraid to spend money, but I'm a miser when it comes to that because we have to be, 
You know, I like to say we're nonprofit, but we're not nonsense. Well, also a lot of this, this is a vehicle for throw, flow through value yeah. that you're not really charged for, but that businesses as well as uh, your partners, as well as community members give to you, whether it's in terms of time, in terms of resources, yeah. in terms of uh, faculty and so on and so forth. Yeah, so I mean, we have to be good stewards of the money that we're giving, we, you know, and I take that responsibility very seriously, so. And how many faculty members teach at your, on an annual basis, how many different Boy, faculty members do you from have? From the different universities and what we've got going on, 40 to 50, most likely would be the, that's a pretty good number, I would think. So you have three people who basically deal with the administrative infrastructure, the, count, the accounting, yes. um, the registration, all that stuff. Right. And then you have 40 or 50, so you basically have uh, a, a, you know, 8% um, full-time employment to a 92% uh, uh, sort of faculty, right. which, which just expands, and it shifts as well, because sure. as, as your programs shift, you have different faculty members. Right, I mean, as classes shift and, different, and it's different people, and there's new faces all the time, quite frankly. And your students are drawn from where? It's funny, we, we draw from eight different counties. So in six counties in Indiana, and we're a border county, so we're actually drawing from two counties in Ohio. So we've not only blurred that imaginary line, the state line, we've erased it because we, you know, we're a regional training center and we wanna be a regional partner. And just, because as we succeed, our community succeeds, the state succeeds, the United States succeeds. I mean, we're just, you can't change the whole world, but we can change our neighborhood, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. Wonderful. Rusty Inman, thank you so much for sharing the work of the John Jay Center for Learning. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for sharing the experiences of those uh, in and around uh, Portland, Indiana, and thank you so much for your insights. Hey, thank you for having me today.